Remember when magic used to be fun? All rabbits out of hats, Paul Daniels, soiling ladies in half and making annoying audience members disappear? Alright, scratch that. Magic was never really fun, well apart from David Copperfield. He was brilliant, he was, I loved him. But it was a lot less dangerous than what's going on in the pages of Titan Books' latest comic title, Rivers of London Bodywork. Now this little comic marks the maiden voyage of London copper Peter Grant from the Rivers of London book series to the comic world. Now the book series is written by Ben Aranovich, who also shares co-writing duties on the comic along with Andrew Cartmel. And what's really cool for fans of the actual book series is that this comic is set in continuity between books 4 and 5. But the real question we want to ask is, is Rivers of London Bodywork a worthy spin-off to the series? Is it a great standalone title? Or is it something that should be left at the bottom of the Thames? Now, old Pete Grimes is not your typical copper. He investigates any supernatural dodginess roaming the streets of London. He belongs to a special branch of the police called Falcon, and he's not too fussed about what you call them, so long as you give him a shout when things kick off. The comic opens with a grisly murder, and it's not long before our boy Pete is on the case sniffing for supernatural shenanigans. He's soon partnered up with fellow copper DC Gulead, and it doesn't take the pair long to find themselves in harm's way. Going into Rivers of London, knowing it was based on a popular book series, I already had my benchmark set on what I wanted from the story. It was really important that this was accessible to me as a new reader and that I didn't need to have some kind of, I don't know, Rivers of London Wikipedia page open at the same time. Thankfully, I found the comic completely accessible as a newbie. There were also some nice references to what I assume are events from the book series that, that made me want to check out the novel after I finished the comic. Even though there's a lot of setup and world building in this first issue, it still moves along at a fast pace. Um, it even takes the time to explain quite a lot about police procedures to the reader, which I thought was great. My only real critique at the moment with the story is that is the whole clock line didn't really engage me as much as I thought I would have liked. However, this is only the first issue, and given how the story ends, hopefully it's one of those calm before the storm jobbies. Just got to wait and see. I thought the art was really strong, I and mean, there's some really nice colours in there. There's a great sense of movement on some of the pages, and none more so than the opening page, which reminds us all of the horrors of Death by Drowning. There's also a great page later on in the issue, which has no dialogue save one caption, and yet it moves the story along really well. I've heard it said that with really good art, you should be able to understand the story without words, and I think this page is a great example of that. The other great thing for me was uh, the look of the characters. I thought really detailed, some really nice expressions there, but also as well, because I haven't read any of the Rivers of London book series, I had no point of reference, so there was nothing for me to compare to, I can imagine people who have read the book series are going to come into this with a, a preconceived idea of what they expect Pete to look like and some of the other characters. So maybe in the comments below, I'll be interested to hear from people who have actually read the book and, and how the characters have made that jump to the comic page, if, if they look like you expect them to look. What I found weird was the other person who gets a lot of panel time in this comic is Pete's partner, DC Gulead, and they have some nice little bantering scenes and stuff. And I thought it weird that she wasn't on the cover. And yet there was a there was another person on the cover who does play quite an important role in bringing the case to P, but you don't really see her again. So it just seemed odd that the one character who almost got as much time as P wasn't on the front cover. It's not it's just a little niggle, but it, it did sit oddly with me. Special props to Rona Simpson, uh, who did the lettering. Because much of the reason the world building this first issue was handled so well was down to the fact that a lot of the weight for this was placed on the on Pete's voiceovers, which were handled via captions. However, at times they did risk becoming a little bit too much. But props to Aronovich and Cartmel because they seemed to know when to pull back enough to let the story do the work for them, or just throw in your joke from Pete to kind of keep things flowing. So that was nice. So, do we need to be calling the police frog divers to dig out the copy of Rivers of London? I think it's fairly safe to say that Bodywork Issue 1 is going to stay dry. It's a great opening issue with nice art and solid ideas. Okay, it still clings fairly close to that trope of the Special Investigative Unit, but what it does, it does really well. 
It's a great introduction to the world of Peter Grant and the novels of Ben Aronovich, and I dare say it's going to make you seek out the book series after you finish reading this issue. So Rivers of London Bodywork Issue 1 is available from Titan Books, so you can find all the links you need to pick it up below. Go check it out, people. It's a great read.